So how do you get seller financing? This is one of the biggest questions I'm getting. People want to buy businesses and they understand that if they can get seller financing or the owner to finance part of the deal, they could have much easier time, which is exactly what I'm going to talk about today. How to go and convince a business owner to do more seller financing or a little bit more about the mistakes and lessons that I learned with seller financing overall. So stick with me until the end and I'll share with you things that I wish that someone taught me when I started in this journey of buying businesses. Now, if you don't know me yet, my name is Moan Bober. I'm here to share my journey in the last few years in the business buying world. I'm here to help you buy your dream business or a few of them like I've done in the last few years. I'm also the owner of acquisitions.com. So the first point you need to understand is that most people don't even know that it's possible to get seller financing for a deal. They think that the only way to buy a business is to have a few million dollars in your bank to pay all those millions as a down payment for the business, for the business owner, and then you can own a business, right? Most people don't even know that to ask for seller financing as part of the deal is actually very common if you know how to position it well and you know how to negotiate and structure those deals well so they go to your advantage and not against you, right? Heck, if you go to broker websites like Biz Buy Sell and you look for a list of businesses, you will see that that broker sometimes even write in the listing that seller financing is available. Now, I'm not saying that those are the best deals, but this is just for you to understand that this type of deal structure is very common. Having seller financing as part of deals is very common if you know how to negotiate well and you know how to position yourself well. Second thing for you to understand is that it's about your relationship with the owner that will determine on if and how much of seller financing you'll get. You need to understand, many people come to me, they say, hey, Moran, why would someone do seller financing for his deal? And basically, let me pay for the business with the business cash, right? But you need to put yourself in the seller's shoes. You always need to think about the other side. You always need to understand what's going on in their eyes, right? For you to understand on what deal you can do. Think about yourself. Maybe, unfortunately, you had some, some of your family members had some health issues. And you had and that family member was in a different country and you had to go from today to tomorrow to that country to visit that family member of yours you were very motivated to go and do that right so when you looked at flights to go to that country to visit your family member you didn't look at the price of the flight you just look at the first flight that you can find as soon as possible and you paid whatever it takes to go to visit your family member because he was ill right you wanted to see him as soon as possible you were motivated to do it now you were in that shoes of being motivated or you can at least imagine yourself being in that shoes right now right now think about the business owner who maybe he has some health issues or maybe some of his family members have some health issues and he wants to be with them maybe he just want to retire he's very old now he don't want to work anymore. He worked for so many years. Some of, those, some of those baby boomers out there, they own their businesses for 20 plus years. They don't want to work anymore. They want to exit as soon as possible. They are motivated to sell if they find the right owner that can replace them because the right owner can position themselves as a safe pair of hand. If the owner find himself the right replacement, he will be super motivated and he will be in your side to help you close the deal. If you know how to do things right and how to position yourself and what questions to ask and what things to say. So he will take you seriously more than a competitor that will look to buy him. So when he's motivated, he will be much more open to seller financing. The best way for you to get seller financing a deal is to show and prove the business owner that you are on the same side of the table with him when you negotiate the deal. It's not you against him, it's you coming next to him on the table and trying to close the deal together in order to provide a solution to his problem. And his problem can be him want to retire or him wanting to go out there and be with his family member that is ill or sick. Or maybe he's going through a divorce and you want to help him through that divorce by buying that business from him. Right? There are tons of different reasons for why someone will want to sell a business. But if it looks like you're fighting him for who's going to get a better deal, at least based on my experience and my client's experience in hundreds of deals, 
I can tell you that won't work for you. Another super important thing for you to understand with seller financing is that you need to understand the rules of if and what you can offer him. If you don't know what you can offer him, then obviously you'll have less chances of closing the deal. If you'll know all the different things that you can offer him as part of your deal structure in the seller financing structure, then you'll have more opportunities to convince him that this is good for him. One question I'm getting a lot from people is they're telling me, hey, I want to do seller financing, but the owner wants some guarantees for that seller financing, right? That's just one of the questions I'm getting from people, right? Obviously, they don't know what options they have as part of those deal structures. To give you one example, one thing you can do if you don't want to give your own personal assets, one thing that I'm showing my clients to do is to give the business owner a clawback over the business on if and when you don't pay back the seller financing, right? That's just one example that you can learn from, from tons of different structures and examples that you need to know and understand. And if you don't know them, obviously you have less to offer and less ways to convince the business owner that seller financing is actually good for him, right? So it's for you to understand the rules of the game. The more you know, the more you can show the business owner that what you have is actually comfortable for not just you but him as well and it's actually the best way for him as well then it's going to be much less easier for you to convince him to do any seller financing when a seller is willing to do seller financing he wants to know that you will pay him that amount no matter what and unless you can guarantee that to him somehow which you need to learn and understand how it will be difficult for you to close those deals so as you can see, people make a lot of mistakes here. I saw a small fortune worth of mistakes when people try to do seller financing. They don't even know how to structure the seller financing in the right amounts. They don't even know if they can pay back that seller financing. They're putting their assets on the line, which is fine if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, you're just risking yourself without doing a proper due diligence on a deal. And unfortunately, you can make big mistakes here, which I don't want you to have. And you're making those mistakes because you don't have the full understanding of how a deal looks like from A to Z. You don't understand the acquisition game. You just know that it's cool to buy a business, but you don't know the full process A to Z with the nuances. And you don't have the support and accountability around you. You don't have a second set of eyes of someone who's been there and done there to make sure you're not making those mistakes. You don't have a community of people who can give you those advice and ideas because they've been there and done that right now because they're in the journey like you. Some of them are ahead of you. Some of them are, didn't start it yet and can give you a different perspective on what you are trying to do. And the best way to learn is from other people's mistakes, not by your mistakes. Because unfortunately in this space, as, as, as sexy as this industry and space of buying businesses is, every mistake can cost you a small fortune. That's why you rather make less costly mistakes by learning from others who've been there and done that or at least few steps ahead of you. But in the end of the day, it all comes down to your commitment, to your resourceful, to you taking action consistently and investing in yourself and believing that it's even possible. And the only way to believe that it's even possible is to first of all, believe in yourself. If you won't believe in yourself, the seller won't believe in you either. And if you won't believe that you will pay back the seller financing, the seller won't believe you. And you can read people. You can read people by their attitude, by their certainty. And unless you have those things, it will be hard to have their certainty. Now, a lot of you watch those videos basically came from me, from Dan Pena, which is amazing. He's amazing. He's one of my mentors, right? And he taught me a lot. But they are asking me, hey, how do I follow QLA? Or they look at QLA for dummies and try to understand how they follow QLA for dummies, which is exactly why I created the next video for you. So subscribe to the channel if you didn't yet and like this video. And after this, go and watch this next video QLA for dummies to know exactly what to do for your next steps and i'm looking forward to see you there in a bit go and watch this video right now